There are a couple of things that are really easy to do in Photoshop Elements that are really difficult to do in Photoshop. One of them is Pet Eye. Photoshop Elements has an automated tool for this. Photoshop doesn't have anything for that. And the other is Thought Bubbles or Talk Bubbles. And while that functionality is in Photoshop, it's a little bit buried. Both of those I get asked about all of the time, and both, I'd say, are a lot easier in Elements. Let me show you how to do it in Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop, and you can see we have what's called Pet Eye. If we zoom in on this, it's much like Red Eye with people, only it's a different color. And if I use my Red Eye tool in Photoshop, you'll see that this actually does nothing. So how do I fix this? Well, the first thing we want to do is create a new layer, so we have a non-destructive workflow. And we're actually going to paint in a new eye. To do that, we're going to grab our brush tool. We're going to make sure that our foreground color is black. We're going to choose one of our general brushes. And we're going to use Control and Option, or Control and Alt, to make sure that the outer diameter is about the same size as the eye. And then I'm going to adjust the hardness so it's almost 100%, but not quite. And I'm going to do this by pulling up and down. Left and right would change the size maybe a little bit smaller. Once I've got that where I want, let's make sure our opacity is turned down a bit, because we're going to click on this a couple times. OK, so let's click once and make note of where that glare is at about 10 o'clock. Click again and again to obscure it. There's the tiniest hint of it left, and we're going to use that as a guide. We're going to change our brush type. And mind you, there's lots of different brush folders we could load, but I'm just going to go with this star-shaped one over here. Now I'm going to increase my opacity really high, 92% is great, and I'm going to switch my color to white. I'm going to give myself a slightly larger brush. Remember where that glare was? And just paint that back in. And I can toggle that to see the difference I've made. This being a layer, if I wanted to play around with the blend modes or the opacity, I could do that. I see there's actually a hair that's supposed to go over it. So if I like, I could zoom in even closer, take my eraser, and cut through there. OK, so let's back up and look at that. Before and after. Pretty convincing. Looks good. A lot more manual than in Elements. So let's cover the next thing. Totally unrelated and somewhat ridiculous. How do we add speech or thought bubbles to this? Well, those are here too, but you need to know where to find them. They're under all of these very serious shape tools down here with custom shape. And you'll find all sorts of crazy stuff in here. And deep down at the bottom are a variety of different speech and thought bubbles. And we'll choose this one here. And there's a couple of parameters you want to make sure are set. Shape, we're going to fill that with white and stroke it with white as well. And we'll just draw that out here. And that's actually on the wrong side. So I'm going to hit Command-T, and we're just going to invert that, move it over, shrink that down a little, make it wider. And let's see what's on this guy's mind here. We're going to grab our type tool, change our text to black, and let's see what he would say. And I could even change how that's oriented, move it around, and when I'm ready, I can commit that. Thanks, I needed that. So there you see two things that are really easy to do in Elements that are certainly possible in Photoshop. You just need to know where to look.